Hello, my name is Beverly. Greet you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I wanted to make a really quick video. I don't have a lot of time, but I do want to make this video before I go today. And this video is just to urge you to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Because there is soon coming a time where you won't be able to find him. Where you're going to be reprobate and you're going to have been sent a strong delusion since you don't love the truth. So seek the Lord now, love the truth now. What is the truth? The Bible, the things that Jesus told us, the things that are written from Genesis to Revelation. Don't let anybody tell you that the Old Testament is irrelevant. The Old Testament just needs to be understood in the light of the New Testament. It's not irrelevant. Jesus said not one jot or tittle, that means not one cross T or dotted I will pass away from the law until everything is fulfilled. And you know the day, the coming of the Lord and the day of the Lord is spoken of in the Old Testament as well. So we know that even the Old Testament is not completely fulfilled until Christ's return and, and God's final judgment. But anyway, the point is, seek the Lord. I urge you, if you call yourself a Christian and you intend to go to heaven and you sincerely intend to go to heaven, maybe you've been a little slowful, Maybe, uh, you know, the devil is doing to you what he's trying to do to everybody. And that is to distract you, to get you off course, to, uh, you know, just make you delay all the things that you intend to do so it will be too late for you. But I would like to encourage you, seek the Lord, seek him now. The time that you spend watching television being on Facebook, maybe going out with your friends, talking to your friends on the phone, a hobby, anything that you don't absolutely have to be doing, spend that time in prayer. I mean, don't think it grievous to devote hours to prayer. The Bible said Daniel prayed three times a day. So if you take three hours I'm sure that will be great. That will be maybe enough. But you go by how you feel. Maybe you need to pray more. Who knows? But certainly, most people, the vast majority of Christians, don't spend enough time in prayer. Certainly. If any time in prayer. If you just roll out of the bed and say, you know, Lord, bless me, send me on my way, protect me all day. And then when you get in the bed, it's, oh, you know, now lay me down to sleep. That's not enough. That's not enough for you to get the heart and mind of God. It takes, like if you were dirty, would you just run water in the tub, cold water in the tub, because you're cold when you first begin to pray? Would you just put cold water in the tub, get in the tub for 30 seconds and get out and think you're clean? Think you've accomplished what you went in there to accomplish, which was to bathe and to be clean. Same thing in prayer. You, you have to soak. So just, if you, if you love the Lord at all, you know that that's true and I don't have to convince you of it. You know if God is calling you to spend more time seeking his face in prayer and in your Bible and less time in the foolish things of this world. 
So the reason is, is because over the last week, last few days of, of last week, I've been having dreams that I couldn't really remember, that I would be too tired to, you know, wake up and write down, but I would kind of have them and then just lay there and kind of think about them and fall back off to sleep. But I knew what they were about. I just couldn't remember the details of them. And all of it was about the Lord is coming. The, I mean, like his coming is just so, so near, like, I mean, like maybe like days and, and just remember, you know, there are 365 days in a year. So even if it's a year or two, which it doesn't even have to be that long, that's still just days away. There's no time. There's no time. Seek God. Seek him to walk in the spirit to reveal to you the meaning of his word, just seek him. Just seek him. Like when you try to call one of your friends, you know, you don't just dial the number. If you really want to talk to him, you don't just dial the number and hang up after one ring. No, you let it ring. And then if they didn't answer, you call it back. You might even hang up and call right back a few times. Or you leave a message. And you'll keep doing it until you hear back from them. It's no different with the Lord. It's no different with the Lord. If you're not feeling him answer you back, pray harder. Pray more. He will answer you. He's no respecter of persons. What he did for Daniel, what he did for John the Revelator, or any person in the Bible, he's willing to do that for you. to let you know that he's real and to equip you with the things that you need in these final days, because there will be just few that are saved because of what you see now. I just saw a video on um, YouTube posted by a relative of mine who um, is supposed to be, I think, a minister, certainly a, a church going person. And the, the video was of just a bunch of foolish clamor of people gathered together in a choir, just performing. Just reminded me of something that you might have seen around dancing around the golden calf in the book of, um, of Exodus. So it was just ridiculous. And the, the director of the choir, he was uh, he was doing a dance that would have uh, you know put James Brown to shame. It was a combination of James Brown and The Matrix, and everybody was commenting, "Oh, you better praise him, you better direct, you know, give him glory, all kinds of stuff." And I just I shared the video and I and I said, "Pray for discernment." This is not God. And, and I said, you know, they put it right. They said, this is a performance. It's not worship. And the father is seeking people to worship him, not to perform to their own glory or for their own enjoyment. And those are the kinds of things that you get from prayer, that you get from walking and knowing God. Because if you just look from the outside and if you just look from, you know, what you get just going to church, you'll accept those sorts of things and call them worship. But it's not worship. It's not acceptable before God. It's foolishness. It's, it's vain glorying. It, and it's a shame to even be done before the Lord, let alone, you know, calling it of the Lord. But if you don't pray, you won't know that. If you don't pray, this won't make any sense to you. The cross is foolishness to them that perish. 
So you have the blind and you have those that see. Seek God that you may be able to see. And I, I will not waste any breath at all arguing. I even put that in the post. Do not bother making any comments on, on this post to argue with me. If you like what you just saw, carry on. Because it says in Revelations, let him who's filthy be filthy still. Let him who is holy be holy still. Let him who's righteous be righteous still. Even so, come Lord Jesus. It's, it's got to that time. If you're blind, you're going to die blind. If you see, you'll be saved. But seek the Lord. If there's something that you've been feeling nudging you to pray more, to have a life of prayer, now's the time. Now's the time to get on board. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. And I'm going to tell you what too late means. Like I said, the strong delusion. What God said in 2 Thessalonians, which I want to read a little bit of it to you. It says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. We know that's the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. That, in, that means in order that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So believe me, if you do not seek the Lord now, you're showing, search the scriptures, pray for understanding of them, study the Bible. It takes time to understand the Bible. Don't turn to other versions either. God will give you understanding of the King James Version because the other versions are with water down, whole nother discussion. But that, what I just read shows you that if you don't seek the truth now, it's because you don't love the truth. And if you don't love the truth, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, God's going to send them a strong delusion that they will believe the lie. A lie. What is the lie? What is that lie? What is the strong delusion? It is what Christ said in John chapter 5, verse 43. I'm going to start with verse 42. That's St. John chapter 5, verse 42 and 43. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Why do you think Jesus said that? If another shall come in his own name. Jesus didn't waste any words. He didn't waste any time. He didn't even waste any food. He gathered up the fragments that were left behind when he fed the 5,000. Um, so he meant something by that, what he said in verse 43. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Who is that one? That, that's going to come in his own name and people will receive him. Jesus came and said that he's the son of God and he spoke about God. 
But this one that's coming, he's going to come in his own name and he's going to say that he is God. Go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we'll read verse 4. I'll read verse three for context. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come, meaning the great day of the Lord, the last day, except there come a falling away first, a falling away from the truth. And that man of sin be revealed, the Antichrist, the son of perdition. Verse four, who opposeth and exalteth himself. He's coming in his own name above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So he's coming in his very own name. Jesus came in the name of his father and he said, and you don't believe him. But there's going to be one who's going to come in his own name and say, you're looking at him. I am God and him. You're going to believe because you don't love God. Because you're not seeking him now. So that that's why you're going to fall for this one that's coming in his own name. And I'm bringing this because in a dream on. 317. Of 2016, I had a man warning of ancient prophecies to heathen people. Ancient prophecies that were given to heathens, not to, you know, how the different nations and different um, groups of, of, of peoples all over the world have all their legends and have all their different gods that they worshiped. But I really believe that there was warning in even all those cultures, because the Bible says those that are without the law will be judged without the law. So they're going to be judged. God knows how to judge them according to what they knew. Anyway, He, he's the righteous judge and every judgment that he judges, we will know is right. But that's beside the point. So this man, he was warning of ancient prophecies and these prophecies were given to heathen people. And it said, if the man come in his own name, we shall select the demon. So when people come and bring you something and they come in the name of the Lord, people dismiss that immediately. They get all kinds of disrespect because they come in the name of God. But you let a person come in their own name, spout out their own views. People love that. They just don't want anything to do with God. They don't love him. Back to John, St. John, chapter five, verse 43, 42, where Jesus said, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. That's why when they hear anything that has to do with God, it's immediately rejected. But when a person comes and they're not, they don't have any of the, um, the surrender that it takes to serve God, you can still do what thou will. But anyway, I just want to bring that out. The beast is going to be somebody who you select, you choose. And you're not going to even know you're wrong anymore if you don't seek God now, if you become reprobate. I want to read from Romans real quick about a reprobate mind. Okay. That's Romans chapter one, 
verse 28. Uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 1, yeah, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting. So, yeah. See, God. I can't get too wrapped up in whether or not people do it or not. And I'm not going to allow myself to be burdened down with what people do or what they choose not to do. I urge you. But you have your own choice to make. Will you choose him who came in the name of the Lord? Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Choose him who come in the name of the Lord. Don't choose him who's coming in his own name. He's coming in his own name. We have but days to go. Just days to go. We are the last generation. And there are just days left. Maybe hundreds of days maybe just a few days, but the Antichrist is about to be revealed and he will come in his own name. That's how you know him. One has already come to us, Jesus Christ, and he came in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. But don't be of those who yell crucify him or change their Hosanna into crucify him. Get on your knees, get in your word. Make that your life. Make that your life. If you don't, you won't make it. If you don't, you will be deceived. God has appointed you to deception. I urge you, if you have the spirit of compromise, spit it out. God bless you. I love you, brothers and sisters. Keep seeking the Lord. And I, I pray that God will bring those who love him together, that we might have godly fellowship with one another. <laughs>